Hi, I'm Lin Zhang. I'm a PhD candidate at Columbia University. Uh, it's my honor to be here to present uh, our work on large-scale propensity score. This is joint work with my collaborators and advisors Yi Xin Wang, Mark Taishumi, David Bly, and George Ripsack. So confounding remains one of the major challenges to causal inference with observational data like EHRs and claims data. So what is a confounder? Let's say if I want to do a study to study the effect of carrying matches on uh, the probability of having lung cancer, uh, I, if I look at any observational database, I would find that people who carry matches are more likely to have lung cancer. However, there's a confounder here, that is a smoking status. People who are smokers are more likely to carry matches around, and we know that smoking causes lung cancer. So smoking status in this case is a confounder. It's a common cause between the treatment and the outcome. Without adjusting for confounders, I can get wrong causal estimates. Propensity score is a popular method to adjust for confounding. So propensity score is the probability of belonging to the target group uh, relative to the comparator group given a set of baseline characteristics. In reality, uh, propensity score is not known. So people often estimate that from data. And people often estimate propensity scores by fitting a logistic regression to the treatment and the input to the regression is a set of variables that are believed to be confounders. Once we estimate the propensity scores, uh, it can be used in many different ways to remove confounding, such as in matching, stratification, or inverse probability of a treatment weighting IPTW. Here, showing an example of a propensity score distribution between the target and the comparator group before matching, and we see that the distributions are quite different. And after matching, the propensity score distributions are similar or almost identical in this case between the two groups. And this shows that uh, the observational study now mimics a randomized trial. The treatment can be considered as randomized in our observational study. So traditional propensity score method relies on confounder selection, variable selection. So how do researchers select confounders? Usually through the following ways, domain knowledge and literature review of published studies that study the same hypothesis or through some empirical uh, association in the data to find variables that are associated with the treatment and the outcome because that's by definition a, a confounder. So what can go wrong in this case? So the problem is that if a confounder, if some variable that we believe is a confounder but has not been measured in the database, then it's an unmeasured confounder and we cannot adjust for it. And sometimes maybe those variables are measured in the database, but because confounding structure is not known, then when we select variables, we can miss to select a confounder, even if it is in the database, but regardless, if there's a variable that's a confounder and we fail to adjust for it, that can lead to bias in our causal analysis. So when we do observational research in Odyssey, we do not select the confounders. We use this causal inference technique called a large scale propensity score. It includes all variables available in a database. That's about 60,000 variables in the propensity score model. Not only we hope that by adjusting for everything, we capture all measure confounders, but we also hope that we can capture all measure confounders because variables in EHR database are so highly correlated. And in previous studies, this is empirically observed that ALF's PS can balance all our measure confounders. So in this paper, we formalize this belief uh, or this empirical observation and into an assumption called a pinpointability. So pinpointability means that a variable is so highly, so the unmeasured uh, confounder is so highly correlated with measured covariates. In this, under pinpointability assumption, we no longer have an unmeasured confounder because the measured covariates X can pinpoint the unmeasured confounder. So the unmeasured confounder is indirectly measured in this case. So, and when we use LSPS, 
we adjust for just the x, we can still have unbiased estimates. So we did an experiment to show that when pinpointability is strong, that's to the left of this graph, then adjusting for only the measured covariates can lead to unbiased estimate. And when pinpointability decreases, LSPS can encounter more and more bias, which is not surprised. However, the traditional propensity score approach by adjusting for only a small set of confounders do not benefit largely from uh, pinpointability. The, uh, the effect to estimate uh, is always biased. We ran the same ex experiment on real EHR data, and we found that when we do LSPS, no matter whether we adjust for an important confounder or not, the effect estimates are always very similar. But when we do a traditional propensity score, that is manually adjusting for confounders, if we adjust for all confounders, the effect the estimate is very similar to what we get from LSPS. But if we miss to include a very important confounder in this case, then the effect the estimates can be very far off from the, the other uh, estimates. So in conclusion, LSPS is a confounding adjustment approach that includes large-scale pretreatment covariates in estimating propensity scores. This paper contributes to understanding conditions under which LSPS adjusts for indirectly measured confounders and how color effect estimation by LSPS is impacted when such conditions are violated. And we demonstrate the performance of LSPS compared to traditional PS on both simulated and real medical data. And here's the reference. This work is uh, published and available on uh, JBI. Thank you.